G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Microsoft Excel 2013 tutorial. This time around we're going to do some more functions leading on from the last video. Okay, I'm going to keep going with this spreadsheet here. If you need to grab a copy of it, it's simply down in the description of the video. Just click on the link, download the file. However, if you've got the spreadsheet from the last video, just keep using it. So the first thing we're going to do is fill in these three columns. Okay, and then we're going to add a little bit more afterwards. So the first thing we're going to do is just attack this total column which basically adds up the three marks the students received and then puts it in the cell next to it. So I'm going to use a formula, I'm going to use the sum function again, but instead of going vertically, we're just going to go horizontal, like that. Hit enter, and our job is done. I'm just going to use the fill down now, by clicking and dragging, to copy that formula down for all students, and you'll see it's automatically adjusted for each student. And I just love that about Excel, it just makes your life so much easier. I'm actually going to do this again up here, and the reason I'm doing it across these three numbers is I've now got the total mark that students could receive across all three tasks. Okay, And I'm going to use that number to calculate the percentage of the student's mark against the total marks. So I need to figure out April's, Jerry's, John's and Blade's percentage out of what they could have received. And it's pretty easy to do. Okay, So for April, and everyone else really, you're just going to take their mark and divide it by the total. So let's do that here. So we're just going to go equals for a formula, click in E4, slash for divided by, click in E2, hit enter, and we've got 0.88. Now that means 88%, and to make it look like that, you simply press percentage like that. It automatically increases it by 100, as you can see. I'm also going to fill that down and get lots and lots of errors, and I'm going to quickly take you through why. If I click in Jerry's formula, you'll see that E5 is selected, which is perfect, but E3 got selected as well. That's because when you copy your formulas down, it moves every cell reference down with it. So what we're going to do, we have to change this E2 because I don't want him to move at all. He has to stay the same for every single formula. So what I want, I want an absolute cell reference. Right now it's what you call, sorry, it's what you call a, oh my god, I've lost the terminology. Okay, it's called a relative cell address, which means when I move the formula, it moves around too. But I want an absolute cell reference, which means it will never move. And to do that, I'm going to simply put my cursor on E2, and I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard. And you'll see the dollar signs around it mean that it does not move. And I'm going to fill it down now. And you'll see that E2 has not changed in any of the formulas. Okay, that's the percentage done. Time for the rank. It's pretty simple as well, just bringing in another function. I'm going to hit equals, we're going to type in rank, and we're going to find out who came first, second, third, or fourth. And that's the beauty. The rank needs two things. It needs a number, and then it needs the table or the list of numbers it's going to judge it against. So for example, I want to judge April's percentage or total, it doesn't actually matter which one you use in this case, against all the other percentages. So I'm going to click on that number, I'm going to press comma to get to the reference, and I'm going to highlight from F4 to F7, but before I go anywhere I'm going to let go of the mouse and I'm going to press F4 on the keyboard, and you'll see all the dollar signs appear, and I'm going to hit enter to finish the formula, and you can see that April came first. So now when we fill this down, we figure out who came in what position. Now that is incredibly handy when you've got a class of 30 students as a teacher. It's really easy to tell who came first, second, third, and fourth, and so forth like that. Okay, so that's getting pretty close to done. Now I want to add another column before I finish this video up, and this one is going to be called grade. All right. This grade is going to basically tell me if somebody failed, passed, got a credit distinction or a high distinction in any one of these situations. Okay, So what I generally, I use a rule of, just a basic rule of thumb, I say that if they get 0 to 49% then they've failed. Okay, If they get 50% to 64% they have passed, 65 to 74 they got a credit, 75 to 84 they got a distinction, 85 to 100 they've got a high distinction. Okay, I'm sorry if you didn't catch those numbers, but we're going to be typing them up soon anyway, so you don't need to remember them off by heart. Okay, so to do this, we first of all need a table of references. We need to have those values that I've just spruced out to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to create 
another sheet, okay? So I've got a fresh set of cells, and I can put more data in here. And the reason I do it here instead of the main sheet is that this table will get in the way if it's not on another sheet or if it's not right out of the way, okay? I could easily put the table down here that I'm about to create, but if I add more students, it's going to move it around. If I add the table over here, it's going to look ugly, so I simply add it on the second sheet, okay? And before we go anywhere, I'm simply going to rename this sheet. I'm going to right-click, I'm going to click Rename, and I'm going to call it Grade Table, like so. And we're going to have two headers for this. We're going to have Percentage and Grade, okay? In the left column, I'm going to bold those two, by the way. Control-B, I did that. The left column here, we're going to put in the percentage starting value for the grade, and then the actual grade column, we're going to put the name for it. So for a fail to start with, it's 0%. Simple as that. Okay, and if you start at 0%, you get a fail. The next bracket is the pass, so that starts at 50%. So you type in 50% and then type in pass. And what that'll automatically do, Excel is smart enough to realize that 0 all the way up to 50, not including 50, will be a fail. And then from 50 all the way up to our next category will be a pass. So we're simply going to put in the next category, which is 65% for a credit. The next one is 75% for a distinction. And then we go 85% for a high distinction, if I can type. Okay. Now you'll notice that I have not put in 100% or anything larger. And that's simply because if they get 85 or greater, they're going to get a high distinction. If I really feel like it, I could put 101% and then put um, invalid mark. But I'm actually not going to. I'm going to leave that off just for the sake of it, guys. So now we have to utilize these values and give every single student a mark based on the percentage that they got. Okay? So we're going to bring in a pretty complicated function for this one, and I want to take my time in explaining it, and then we'll finish up the video. I'm going to rename sheet one as well, by the way. Right click, rename, and we're going to go students marks. That seems logical that we would do that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take April's percentage. I can tell you right now it's a high distinction. We're going to compare this percentage against the grade table, and the function that we're going to use is simply going to pull the grades label from this right hand column and then put it in our cell. Now, this also introduces another problem because the data that we're going to be using in this function is on another sheet, okay? And this is a cross-sheet reference. We're going to show you this very, very soon, and it's not too hard to get your head around once you see it, okay? It just means that we're going to be creating a formula on sheet one, which is our student marks, and we're going to be referencing cells on the grade table sheet instead. So the function we're going to be using is called VLOOK, whoop, if I can spell, LOOKUP. Okay, and if you read the description of the actual function, I don't think it actually helps you that much, but what it does is it looks at one value against a whole table, compares the value, and finds the correct cell to put as a value in the final one. That's not even a good description of what it does, but it's like the process of it, okay? So the first thing it asks for is the lookup value, and that's the percentage we're going to be using. So I'm simply going to click on April cell, and I'm going to leave it as a relative reference, simply because when we copy this formula down, I want this to change. I want the reference or the lookup value to change as well. Now, press comma and we get the table array. So, whoops, I screwed up my lookup value. Oh, shut up. Okay. My table array is the one that we've created on the grade table sheet, okay? So this is when you've got cross-sheet references coming in. So when I click on grade table, you're going to see, just have a look at my formula bar at the top here. When I click on that, you can see that it's created this, okay? This is what appears in front of a cell reference if it exists on a sheet other than the one that has the formula. So because the formula is on student marks, it has put grade table in apostrophes with an exclamation point on the end to indicate it's on another another sheet, okay? Then all you do is you highlight all of your cells for your table, just like so. And because you don't want this table to move, you don't want this to be a relative reference, you want to hit F4 once again to create your absolute cell references, so you can see up here how that's changed it all. Okay, and we've actually got to hit comma one more time, 
and we need the column index num. Now the col index num is simply a plain integer which indicates which column the final value comes from. So that means that this second column, these are where the final values are. So that's column 1, this is column 2, I'm going to type 2. Close the bracket, hit enter, and that's going to finish our VLOOKUP. Okay? I know that's pretty confusing because you've got all this extra data in there. I'm just going to quickly turn on my formulas, scroll across, and quickly explain it again. Okay. So what the VLOOKUP does is it takes this cell, which is our percentage in this case, it goes and has a look at the table that you've referenced over in the grade table, and it will basically ask the question, okay, this percentage I've got, where does it fit in this table? Okay, so it doesn't fit between 0 and 49, so it's not there. It's not 50 to 64, it's not there, not there, not there, but it is from 85 and above, so this is where it sits, okay? The last value, this 2 that we specified, is when you find where it sits, grab the value from the second column. If I put 1 in its place, it's actually going to put 85%. Okay? Which we don't want. We actually want the second column. But that's just a quick idea of what's going on there. Okay? Now, because I've used the absolute cell references, I can copy this formula down. And my students have done interestingly. And that's it, everybody. That's the entire spreadsheet complete. And that's pretty much what I wanted to get at. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I'll catch you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.